Good day, mates. This is a Senate election prediction um, for 2024. We have a baseline already uh, with Joe Manchin retiring. It's essentially a 50 Republican, 50 Republicans and 43 Democrats. This one's going to be a rather quick one. Pennsylvania, what McCormick is outpacing. A, a zombie essentially but he's nowhere near winning against Casey I mean Trump is performing I think at around 46 percentage points to, to Biden's 42 and then Casey's already above 50 so that's not gonna happen it's uh, it's like a 90 90 percent chance victory for Casey it's there's a chance that it's going to be less than 10 percentage points but not really come on not really. I'm just going to be a little lenient towards McCormick here because he's probably going to spend like 90 million dollars in this race. Fucking idiot. All right. Um, let's start with the Rust Belt. Republicans don't really have a bench in either Michigan or Wisconsin, so I'm just going to have those lean Democrat. Easy, right? I mean, if Scott Walker decided to run for the Senate, there may be a chance. Just maybe. Michigan. I don't think uh, I don't, th don't think there's actually a bench for that. I'm just gonna check it real quick. We have the House of Representatives. I don't wanna see that one. I wanna see the Senate. So we have Michigan. James Craig. Eh, that's okay, I guess. Michael Hoover, Peter Meyer, the fucking dwarf. Sherry O'Connell, sorry, O'Donnell. Sandy Penzler, Mike Rogers, former congressman. Sharon Savage, Ezra Scott, Nikki Schneider, Alexandra Taylor, and J.D. Wilson. Um, I'm just going to say this in the simplest way that I can. It's probably gonna be James Craig. He makes it a little narrower against Slotkin, so I'll leave it at that. Wisconsin. Let's go back at that. Tammy Baldwin. You have Stacy Klein, Rajanik Vierderan, and Patrick Schaefer. Literally who? So that's not gonna not gonna do anything here. Let's move to Ohio. Sherrod Brown. And then we have four Republicans, Dolan, LaRose, Moreno, and Stewart. I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, so we have Dolan, who is basically like your Cincinnati uh, or your Columbus Republican. He's going to lose statewide, so that doesn't really matter. Flag Frank LaRose, and you have Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump endorsed Moreno, as, as did Rick Grinnell, as did Mike Lee, and Marco Rubio, and J.D. Vance. So, basically, Moreno is going to go skyrocketing, and he's going to get the nomination. What does that mean? At the moment, Moreno doesn't really have that polling advantage. But with Trump on the ticket, um, I'm going to say... It leans. It's going to be a little, let's do tilt, a little less like a victory that JD Vance had, but it's going to be a victory for the Republican because I don't see a way in which Bernie Moreno is underperforming Donald Trump by at least 10 points. I don't see that happening. So, next we have Montana, Nevada, and um, Arizona. So I'm just going to open those real quick, those pages, because I want to see a little more about the information there. Let's go with Nevada, because that one is going to be the least interesting. Jackie Rosen is running for re-election. She easily has it. 
as well and then you have the uh, basically every single fact is already running uh, for her now we have on the Republican side we have Sam Brown military veteran and uh, well preacher and technically carpetbagger so that you have William Conrad, you have Tony Grady, Jeff Gunter, Rhonda Kennedy, Barry Lindemann, Jim Marchant and Stephanie Phillips And I'm going to simply say this. Um, my support is for Marchant. So uh, that doesn't really matter because uh, Brown is going to be picking up steam. And the funny part is about Rosen. She is outpacing Brown by like a ridiculous margin. That would be a likely Democrat. Montana. And this is the fun one. So you have Senator John Testicle, sorry, John Tester. Keep doing that mistake. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I keep thinking back about that show that Annihilated did with Testament and they changed the banner on the background. That was pretty fucking funny. Alright, so we have candidates that have decla of, uh, declared uh, Brad Johnson and Tim Sheehy. So, uh, Brad Johnson. Is uh, let's see, Montana Public Service Commission. So, so he is a statewide elected officer, as a secretary of state, for an example. And the funny part about Tim Sheehy is he's basically a carpetbagger for a military industrial firm, who's got the backing of John Thune, Eric Schmidt, Marco Rubio, Mark Mullen, Steve Daines. So, you get the point. The uh, the establishment is going for she, and at the moment Tester and she are in the dead heat, and I'm going to say incumbency advantage. That's the only thing I need to say here. I don't think that Tester is going to outperform Biden by 15 to 20 points. I don't believe that. But I do believe that Tim Shee is going to underperform Trump by a significant margin. I think this is going to be a perfect example of the Libertarian Party screwing over the Republican nominee once again. And this, by the way, is the fourth election in a row that Tesla won because of the Libertarian Party. Keep that in mind. Last one, Arizona. Cinema, she has filed paperwork, but then again, we don't really know if she's running for re-election. I find this fucking hilarious, the outpost. Cinema is not a centrist, she is a fucking socialist. She's a fucking socialist, shut up. So you have Gallego against the lake. against cinema if she's running. Now here's the thing. If cinema isn't running, this seat is going to go for Gallego. If cinema is running, then Lake is winning. So for now I'm going to say Lake is of Cinema is running and Lake is going to narrowly eke out a victory because of it. I, I could do an aggregate real quick but we can already see like national research dead heat if cinema isn't running signal which is a DeSantis firm says Gallego plus three but that's within uh, essentially margin of error range and the undecideds could break for either one so um, Essentially what we're having here is the notion that 
this is an outside chance that the Republicans go in, leaving us with 52 Republican senators to 48 Democrats. And yes, I am marking King and Sanders as Democrats, as you should. They vote 100% aligned with the Democratic Party. There's no reason to mark them as independents. So, Republicans get both houses of Congress, and I'm going to do a presidential election and a gubernatorial election next video. So that's going to be real quick. Gonna take maybe like 10 minutes at the most. Thank you kindly for watching. Cheers.